While species go extinct every day, some thought extinct species do get rediscovered. So what other thought extinct species may be alive? The process we use to declare an animal extinct is random, uncoordinated, and ridiculous. Quote from Forrest Galante, a wildlife biologist. In other words, the reasons for declaring species extinct is used inconsistently and many times experts will disagree that a species is extinct. So let's go over officially extinct animals that may still be out there. Basic information on Skomberg's deer. Skomberg's deer is a brown deer with a white underside that may still live in central Laos, which is in Southeast Asia. It likely has or had a diet of low-lying vegetation, and the maximum length of the deer is probably unknown. Why Skomberg's deer should be relisted as critically endangered. Skomberg, in 1991, 52 years after Skomberg's deer was declared extinct, a trucker in Laos found a pair of shedded antlers that scientists were able to determine to be the antlers of Skomberg's deer by the antler structure. And indeed, these antlers were fresh because when they were photographed in 1991, the blood on the antlers were still red, which means the antlers were at most a month old. So there may be a small living population of Skomberg's deer. Why Skomberg's deer matters. Skomberg's deer genus, Reservus, only has three species of which all are threatened with extinction. Skomberg's deer had an ecological role in grasslands and wetlands, which are biodiverse habitats. And Skomberg's deer was part of bio the global biodiversity of the earth, which is essential for maintaining life itself. What you can do about it. Like all threatened species, raising awareness about them through various methods supports and encourages the conservation and recovery of a species if done correctly. Also, be careful what you buy, since demand for traditional medicine from animal bones and other parts has put many animals at risk of extinction. Basic information on the thylacine. The thylacine is or was a canine-like marsupial with a long jaw and, sh and a striped pattern on its back. The thylacine may live in Papua New Guinea, Highland, and is or was a semi-nocturnal uh, predator that hunted small prey and is thought to have reached 51 inches in length. Why, why the thylacine should be relisted as that efficient. These remote villages would say, oh, there's two kinds of dogs, the striped dog and the singing dog. Quote from Forrest Galante talking about remote villages in the New Guinea Highland. So People in remote areas have little reason to lie about what they see. So if, so if, they, so if these people say that they've seen what definitely look, describes a thylacine, it's a pretty convincing account. So perhaps the thylacine has existed in Papua New Guinea 2,000 years longer than previously thought. Why the thylacine matters. Not only is the thylacine the only species of its entire taxonomic family, but it is, was the largest living marsupial, carnivore. And since the thylacine is naturally an apex predator, its presence in the wild always indicates that there is an abundance of undisturbed habitat. Also, the thylacine was part of biodiversity, which is essential for maintaining all life what you can do about it. Be open-minded about new evidence about the thylacine being alive, if it's real, of course, and tell others the same. Any rare animal is or can become threatened by the wildlife trade. So be careful what you buy. And finally, advocate for habitat conservation and restoration in Tasmania, Australia, and Papua New Guinea. Basic information on the Caribbean monk seal. The Caribbean monk seal is or was a medium-sized seal with a dark-colored back and a light-colored belly, and may live in the Caribbean Sea. Though its diet was never recorded, 
It likely preyed upon small marine creature, marine creatures, and had a max length of eight feet. Why there's hope for the Caribbean monk seal. The historical range of the animal is not fully known, which on one hand means the seal could be where we haven't looked yet, but on the other hand, species that have gone through serious decline almost never remain on the edges of their range. But the organization Nature Serve states that an inventory need is for, is to, for the Caribbean monk seal is to continue periodic efforts to locate this species, including a winter aerial survey, which means we should be open-minded about the species being alive or extinct. Why the Caribbean monk seal matters. The Caribbean monk seal's genus, Neomonacus, has only one other member which is endangered. The Caribbean monk seal is or was the only seal native to Latin America and, and is part of biodiversity which is key for maintaining all life. What you can do about it. The likely, but not certainly, last Caribbean monk seals were intentionally killed by fishermen. Since the seals were considered competition, even though seals catch nothing compared to the commercial nets of fish of commercial commercial fishing industries. Commercial fish, fishing has decimated marine life globally, from tiny krill to the largest whales. So if you have to eat seafood, eat in local markets and low on the food chain. Basic information on the deep water cisco. The Deepwater Cisco is a Cisco about a foot long at max and is silvery white with a dark colored back and light colored belly. It may live in Lake Michigan and Lake Huron and has or had a diet of various small aquatic invertebrates. Why there's hope for the Deepwater Cisco. The Deepwater Cisco disappeared from human documentation mainly from overfishing and sea lamprey, an introduced species that's invasive. And sea lamprey have declined from historic levels by over 80% in Lake Michigan and Huron. Perhaps this decline in sea lamprey saved the deep water cisco, but did not allow this species to reach a population that is detectable. Why the deep water cisco matters. The deep water cisco is one of the few fish that live 50 meters underwater in the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes are the largest lake ecosystems in North America. So every fish, including the deep water cisco, represents open freshwater biodiversity. Also, the deep water cisco is part of the biodiversity of the entire Earth as well. What you can do about it. If you catch a sea lamprey in the Great Lakes drainage, don't let the sea lamprey back into the water. But be sure it's a sea lamprey because there are native species of lamprey in the Great Lakes. And if you have to eat freshwater species, eat a non-threatened species that has a short reproductive cycle. And of course, I used a lot of sources for this video, since it's about multiple species. Thanks for watching.